Hey, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us in this edition of Conversations with Camden. Um, today, we're going to try to do a, accomplish a couple of missions. Uh, first, we're going to give a virtual open house. Um, of course, right now the campus is closed uh, due to COVID-19, so we're not able to actually do a physical open house here on campus. So we're going to do the best we can to uh, bring it to you virtually. And also today, this is our graduation weekend. So we're going to have a couple of students um, who will be graduating and going on to college. We're going to hear about their future plans and what they learned here at Camden. But we also have two old timers um, with us today, some alums. Um, back from the class of 2002 and 2011, I believe. So um, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves, and then we're going to go into our PowerPoint, and then we'll let these guys um, answer questions that you have. So we want this to be an interactive experience. So we want you to post your questions to social media um, using the hashtag CMA Open House, and that's hashtag CMA Open House. So you would simply just go to Facebook, um, type your question, and add that hashtag and we will get that question answered. And again, it doesn't have to be Facebook, it's Facebook, Twitter, you can snap a question to Snapchat, um, you name it, we have it. Or you can just ask your question here in the YouTube chat. So, um, all right, let's get to introductions. Again, I'm Casey Robinson, Director of Admissions. I've been at the school for about 20 years. So these two alums, I knew both of them while they were here and uh, we're gonna let old guys go first. So we'll start out with uh, Colby. Why don't you introduce yourself, tell us where you're from and how long you were here and when you graduated. Yep, so my name's Colby Burnett. I uh, was from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and I graduated in 2002, uh, and I started there in Camden in the year 2000. I was there three years, from 10th grade till uh, graduation. All right, and how about you, Nick? Yeah, so my name's Nick White uh, from Denver, Colorado. Uh, started out at Camden in 2009 and graduated in 2011. Um, so I was there three years and uh, graduated as a battalion commander. All right. And now our two current cadets, at least current for another 24 hours or so. Um, we'll let off, start off with Justin Wilson. Uh, my name is Justin Wilson. Uh, I'm from Matthews, North Carolina, and I'm currently a senior and I'm ready to graduate. <laughs> All right. And Jack. Um, my name is Jack Blaine. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm ready to graduate. Go on to college yeah. next step in life. And you have your Texas Tech shirt on today, I see. So, guns up, right? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's um, move into the PowerPoint presentation. This is kind of the nuts and bolts part of the present the the, the show today. Um, and then we will get right into questions. Again, start thinking those questions and posting those to social media and use that hashtag CMA Open House. Um, depending on where you're watching us from, you may or may not have been to Camden. Usually if you've been to Camden, it's either to a horse race or to Camden military probably, unless you're a big history buff. So, um, but anyway, we're 32 miles northeast of Columbia and about an hour and a half south of Charlotte, North Carolina. So we're pretty, uh, pretty good location. We can get to the big city if we need it and we do attend um, games up in NFL, NBA games up in Charlotte. And uh, we use the Charlotte airport as well to students that have to fly in. We have a rich history here at Camden, it dates back to 1892. Um, where Carlisle Military School was back in Bamberg, South Carolina. Uh, we've been on the current campus under the current name since 1958. Um, one thing, if you compare us to other military schools, you'll find that we are by far, by far the most traditional still out there. Um, we are all male. Um, nothing against females, but we do believe that, you know, when you put teenage boys and teenage girls together, there's a lot of distraction. So um, I've always joked, probably with each of these guys that are with us today, that girls are evil. Um, you know, stay away from them until you get to college. There's a lot more to choose from there. Um, but, you know, um, boys and girls learn differently. And in our classroom, we have a very active learning environment. Um, so it's not just sitting in, in, in your desk all day listening to, to lectures. Um, but anyway, that's... We're proud of the all male. And then the all boarding aspect, we don't have any day students. So everyone here is a seven day boarder. Um, whether you're from Camden, South Carolina or Camden, New Jersey or uh, Seoul, South Korea, everyone's gonna be treated the same, no extra furloughs or anything like that. And then of course we're college preparatory. So we were actually founded to be a, a finishing school for a college here in South Carolina. And we still are prepping these guys for college today. And we'll get more into that in just a bit. Um, education being our main mission. Um, sometimes people think about military school as more of a boot camp or a punishment, and uh, we're going to dispel those myths today, but um, we're not. We're about making these guys reach their full potential. 
And that's what all four of these young men that join us today have done. And we're going to explore that. But, you know, we operate the education side of the house very traditionally as well. Um, as you can see, we have six classes a day that last 40 minutes each. Um, if parents watching, there are no block schedules here, um, no hour and a half classes. Um, I don't think I've ever met a teenage boy that could pay attention for an hour and a half, um, you know, especially in a boring math class or something like that. So um, we like the shorter, shorter classes. But the fourth bullet point down, the supervised study halls, that tends to be the key. Most of the young men that I talk to um, are very smart. They do well in class, but they don't turn in their homework. Um, or they never quote unquote have homework. Um, you know, sometimes I will have parents that tell me they did the homework, but the boy just refused to turn it in. So, um, you know, it's, it's crazy, but if you're not doing your homework, that will definitely hurt your grade. And so when guys come in here and they start um, getting these mandatory tutoring sessions and they start with the supervised study halls, um, their grades go up. And, you know, I've had young men tell me, oh, the, the, the school's easier than my old school. It's not that it's so much easier, it's that they're doing what they're supposed to do now and it, the grades automatically go up. If you were doing that at home, your grades would have went up at home. Um, but sometimes you just need to uh, you know, be removed from that environment so you can kind of get your head screwed on straight. And that's what we're here for. A um, couple other important points, um, two week grades. Um, these guys will get a report card every two weeks and tell them exactly where they stand as well as teacher comments. Um, you see, we offer honors and college courses. Uh, the college courses are through the University of South Carolina who actually sends their professors here to teach those courses. Um, so, you know, the, that's good that, that USC will always be on your transcript. So if you're a Clemson fan, I always like to rub it into them. You're always going to have some Gamecock in you um, if you took a college course at, South, at Canada Military. Um, and then the academic scholarships for college. We do help these young men find um, money for college if, if need be. Um, we know a lot of parents spend their money for college here to make sure there will be an opportunity to go to college later. Um, so we'll definitely help you find that financial aid. These are four points that we focus on outside of the classroom. We want all of our young men to have manners, um, say yes, sir, no, sir. Um, you know, still, we try to teach them to be true Southern gentlemen, um, you know, know how to act around ladies, know how to act when you're, you know, at a party at the lake, but also if you were having a presidential steak dinner, you know how to carry, you carry yourself there as well. So, um, but leadership tends to be the, the big key for us. Um, we want everyone to be a leader. We want everyone to be able to think for themselves and not just kind of follow everybody else around like a sheep. And, um, you know, it's hard to stand out. It's really hard for teenage boys to do that. And what we try to do here is, you know, find a fire and light it up. Um, Cause a lot of young men come in to us and they're not really excited about anything. And um, what we'll try to do is find out what does excite them. So is it, is it the academic world that excites them? Is it athletics? Is it the military part? Um, is it the spiritual part? And then once we can build a fire there, get a little spark going, um, success breeds success. And um, yeah, so it, it takes care of every other aspect of his life. And then the free time, um, just a word about that. You know, we've got outdoor swimming pool, weight room. Um, we're going to be breaking ground on a new gymnasium and a new weight room. I know all four of these guys hate they didn't get to experience this. And um, but a lot of fun things coming up that are new expansions. We're going to be expanding the uh, dining facility as well. Um, but all of these activities are here on campus with the exception of the golf course, which is about two miles off, but we can always shuttle you out there in the afternoons. We do place an emphasis on spiritual development. We have a full-time chaplain and um, we feel like this is a key component to developing a whole young man. And so, um, you know, church is required on Sunday mornings. If you're of a non-Christian faith, you have to study your own doctrine during that time. So, um, but church is a requirement just on Sunday mornings. And students can choose to go into uh, church in town and we do have some guys that do that. Um, you know, some will be involved in youth groups or praise bands. And um, it's not always for the great preaching. Sometimes it's for the young ladies that attend that church as well. And that's okay because um, we, we have supervision and, and things like that at those churches. And then the physical development. The top picture there is in the dining facility. Um, still call it a mess hall. Uh, but you have three family-style meals there. So the bowls and platters are brought out and put on the table for you. Um, the Carlisle House is where you can go over and get snacks. We have pizza, french fries, uh, ice cream, you know, anything junky that they um, would want. Good teenage food is available over in the Carlisle House. And always send care packages. Um, don't drop them off and forget about them. Um, you know, they say, and these guys can probably attest to this a little later, but, you know, their parents are really good to them. Maybe their first year, they got a care package every month, or some cupcakes or brownies. And then year two, it kind of all got cut off. They're like, hey, what happened? You know, so um, while they're here, keep sending their scare packages and send enough to share because if they do get some food or something, they're going to be very popular um, within their barracks. Um, 
Spartan Athletics. We've got some athletes on here today and um, 13 varsity sports we have. Um, we've added skeet shooting now, so that's a new sport for us, but you see them all listed there. We have middle school, JV, and varsity sports, and we have a no-cut policy. Um, basketball, we do have to cut occasionally just because we can't have 50 people on a basketball team, um, but that is the, the only sport that we would ever cut. And then your TAC officers. We're going to really talk about the TAC officers later with these young men. These TAC officers make a really big impact on, on all of our cadets, and it's a really key component to success here at Camden. So you want to make sure as a prospective family that when you have your TAC that you keep an open line of communication, um, always stay in touch with him. And a few things that differentiate our TACs from other schools is that the TAC officers are retired military, they're college educated. Um, they are here from 10 o'clock, I'm sorry, from 6 a.m. in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. And then also on the weekends, they're here. Um, at night, we have another adult that comes on the hall to, to supervise to make sure these guys are actually trying to sleep and not partying or trying to crawl out the window to see a girlfriend and, you know, that kind of thing. But we are an open campus, so they also act as security to make sure that, you know, the grounds are safe and secure as well. And then the housing, the barracks. Um, you'll see we have barracks on campus that predate World War II, and then we also have some that um, just were completed a couple of years ago. So, um, but we have five different companies. You have Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Ben and staff. What's the difference? Um, really, the TAC officer is the main difference um, and the location of your barrack. Um, each TAC officer kind of has their own personality. Um, you know, some guys are more of the disciplinarian, some are more of a father figure. Um, and then you also have um, the, the location, like A and Ben and staff are our two oldest barracks, but they're probably the prime location spots. Um, you know, they're close to the gym, they're close to the mess hall, close to the academic building. Then you have Charlie, Delta, and Bravo, it's a little bit further away from everything but then they have more military formations, more marching and, and that type of thing. So there's some give and take with which barrack, um, but they're all great. They all have air condition, um, you know, heat, all that good stuff. You can't be in South Carolina without air condition. And then well-rounded students, um, lots of activities for to get them. Um, we may also go paintballing, um, just movie trips, things like that. And then we do have a summer school program. Um, now we have just, I didn't update this slide uh, ahead of time, but we have just canceled our first session um, due to COVID. So now we are only having our second session. So it would be July 12th through July 31st. And uh, you can take one academic credit in, during that time. Now, the thing with the summer program, it is non-military, which means no haircuts are, allowed, are required and um, no uniforms are required. But there's still a military component because you're still gonna have formations. You're gonna have to clean your room every day and you know do all of that. So it's a good intro to the school year. Uh, but most of our guys that attend the summer program are here from a public school setting just to get that credit that they've missed out and then going back to uh, school and to their public school in the fall. And then this last slide, just ways to contact us. Um, 800 number, of course, we have someone to answer the phone Monday through Saturday. Um, CamdenMilitary.com has lots of good information there, lots of videos. Um, of course, you can find information about tuition, all of that. Um, and then that email address on your screen, admissions at CamdenMilitary.com, that is my personal email address. Um, of course, my name is Casey, so people have misspelled that word, that, that name for years. So I took it away and just changed it to admissions and added an S onto it. So uh, that will come directly to me. And one more thing, one very important thing um, is the we're not having the campus visit right now. So we're doing virtual interviews. So we'll be doing those over, over Zoom, um, FaceTime, um, however we however we want to do it, or just an old-fashioned phone call, um, but we do require an interview. And one one last piece of important info, and then we'll get to these guys, so make sure you post those questions, hashtag CMA Open House. Um, but I want to talk about tuition. Um, our tuition for the year is about $27,000 um, by the time you pay for everything. Um, we do offer financial aid. You can apply for the aid and receive up to 30% off the tuition. It's need-based. Um, so if you're interested in financial aid, you have to notate that on the application when you complete it. So our online application process, the very last question on that application states other pertinent information. That's where you would plug in. I would like to request the financial aid. So um, anyway, this is the only time you hear about that. There's no information about that on our website. We don't advertise it. We wait till you engage with us in an open house or an event or you know, show strong interest before we start talking um, financial aid. All right, so guys, we're going to get back to you with questions. Um, we're going to kick it off, I guess, with why Camden for you? Um, so again, let's start with the old timers first. Nick, whose idea was it and why did they feel like this was a good idea for you? 
Yeah, so uh, originally my grandfather had gone to Carlisle Military School, which is obviously a sister school to, to Camden Military Academy. So um, there was already a little bit of, of that in my family's blood, and my father had gone to the Citadel and, and his father before him. So there was definitely a strong military presence within my house off the bat. Um, I'm the youngest of five boys, so in terms of being able to discipline five individual boys, it was, I think, a little bit of a struggle for my parents. Um, the oldest was at the time 20 and the youngest was 13. So quite a large range of things going on. And um, I think I started to slip in school a little bit because, you know, my dad traveled quite a bit for work and my mom was kind of left to, to manage most of the kids. And I think for me, it was easier to get away with a lot. Uh, so, you know, just kind of started getting out of school here and there and, and not turning in homework and just not really focused or driven and didn't really have strong, you know, male figures to kind of keep me in line there. So um, my dad came home from a business trip one time and, and he showed me the brochure to Canada Military and he told me, you know, I'm not going to make you go. We're not going to force you to do this. But I think you and I both know that if you continue down this path, you know, college is going to be where can you get in, not where do you want to go. And so it was really just about, you know, let's think a little bit further into the future and think how can I sort of start to structure my life in a way to where I'm going to have real opportunities to, to choose where I want to go. So um, we had gone and visited Camden um, in the fall and uh, immediately I, I knew that it was the place for me. I mean, I saw a lot of folks walking around and uh, it seemed, you know, saw people throwing footballs and, and hanging out by the by the pool. And I, I thought to myself, this looks like college in high school. I, you know, I'm going to get a chance to go and make friends and, and kind of make something different for myself. So that was kind of my rationale for, for Canada military and you know, never looked back. All right. And how about you, Colby? Kind of the same question for you. Whose idea was it and, and why did you come to Canada military? Yeah. So, um, mine's not, that's a pretty good story by Nick there. Mine's not as exciting. Um, I, I'll be honest, I didn't really have an option. I didn't have any, um, I wasn't a bad kid. I wasn't, I didn't get in trouble or anything, but it was, I think it was all about schooling, uh, my academics. Uh, to next point, kind of college, uh, it might have been a struggle to, to get in where I wanted to go. Um, but Casey, you were talking about it earlier. I'll tell you, summer school, I started there. I went to summer school first before, um, uh, before I came to Camden. And that was, that was a good little, even though it wasn't non-military, it gave you an idea of the campus, of the of the uh, the staff that was there. Um, so it was a. I would definitely look into that as well if I was a parent. Um, it just kind of eases you into it a little bit for the for the cadet because uh, it's tough. I mean, it was for me and for a lot of the the guys that I went to school with. Well, I think we take that for granted sometimes when you're 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. Yeah, you're just a kid and go away from from home you don't know anybody you're away from your parents your family your friends um it's a different environment so coming to summer school i'd really say uh, that helps smooth it out and ease me into it for sure all right good answers all right how about justin and jack justin we'll start with you whose idea was camden and why um uh camden, camden was actually uh it was kind of a mixed decision i guess you could say like uh, my mom kind of brought it up and I was like, I mean, I, I guess I'll try it. And if I didn't like it, then I just didn't come back. And my first year is, it was a lot. Uh, I had Sergeant Major Wilder help me out pretty much the whole way. And then, so I was, I was like, if I, why not come back if, and ruin something that's already working for me? So um, the reason I came to Camden was cause I was, I started acting up a little bit cause school was just simply too easy for me whenever I moved. And I started goofing off, not really listening, not doing my homework. And yeah. All right. And Jack, now your turn. So Camden was brought up by my cousin. He graduated there in, I want to say, 2018. And he told my parents about it. My parents thought it was the best decision for me. And I, was, I didn't really have a choice to go. But...
All right, sorry, we're having some technical issues, but um, I think everyone is back with us now. But um, we had gone through and asked a couple of these guys about why Camden for them. Um, and Jack, I think you were in the middle of it. So tell us your story again, please. All right, so um, my cousin graduated there in 2018. Told my parents about it. My parents sat down with them. They thought it was the best decision for me. And uh, I went off to the summer school to get ahead in math and Spanish, try to graduate early. And I came in the fall of 2018 in a Charlie company with First Sergeant Collins, just to try to add more structure. My dad being in oil and gas, always being gone. Um, and I think it really helped me. It's getting me to places I want to be, and I'm proud of it. All right. All right, one question I want to ask kind of everyone, um, future plans for our current students, and then also um, our alums, I want you to kind of tell me where you are in life now. So uh, first of all, we'll go back with Justin. Tell us what your future plans are after graduation tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I plan on uh, studying uh, civil engineering or forensic science at West Virginia University and getting my degree in. If I, it's kind of, I'm kind of mixed feelings about it. Um, Cause I, I kind of want to go into forensic science because it's always something I'm interested in. And, but uh, civil engineering will definitely be the harder decision. So I'm kind of just sort of this one. Okay, so I did this with Jack earlier. I did the guns up. So with you, I'll say, let's go. Mountaineers. You're supposed to say Mountaineers. Okay, there you I go. Did. Come on. I All did. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And um, let's see, Jack, we know where you're going, but tell us what you're going to be majoring in and what you hope to do one day. Um, so, like we said, Texas Tech is a pretty good school. Um, I'd like to major in mechanical engineering, if not petroleum engineering. Um, I kind of just taking after my dad, really. Um, I did a lot of traveling with him during the summers, going to oil rigs, and I personally really like it. So, all right. Well, you're in Texas, so that that's kind of suit, suiting you, right? <laughs> all yes, right. Sir. Okay. Now let's get to our alums and talk about um, life after Camden and where you are now. Nick, why don't you start us off? Yeah, sure. So uh, upon graduating CMA in 2011, uh, I went to Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina, so not too far away, and I majored in business administration. And then I got out of Camden and wanted, to, or got out of Furman, excuse me, and uh, I really wanted to get into finance. So my, my whole family is finance background, brother, dad, um, a lot of my siblings are in finance, so I figured that was the route that I wanted to go. Um, so I actually ended up getting into uh, financial services consulting and working on transformation programs for large banks. Um, so right now I work for a small boutique consulting firm, about 60 to 75 people right now. Um, and we work with large enterprise banks, you know, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, things like that, um, to do large transformation programs, whether that be new databases or, you know, existing business processes need to be redeveloped. So really just a, as a, as a project management consultant for large commercial banks. All right. And Nick also recently got engaged to that part out. So congratulations. I did. <laughs> yep. Thanks. Whole new world to wait you. All right. Oh yeah. And, sure. um, and then Colby, how about you? Tell us kind of what happened after Camden and where you are now. Yeah. So, um, I went to Lander university, uh, as soon as I graduated. And after that, um, uh, had some retail experience, really. I was, uh, my first management job was at Waffle House. Uh, it's the only place that would hire me without management experience. Um, and uh, from there, I, I went to uh, was in the operations role at, at Family Dollar. And now I'm currently an owner-operator at Chick-fil-A uh, in Dubuque, Iowa. But I'll be going to Fayetteville, North Carolina, to open a new restaurant there uh, in January of 20. 21. Yep. That's where I'm at now. All right. I'll welcome you back to the South. All right. I'm ready. I want to give a shout out to Colby too, um, because he actually, we had some students here that stayed with us during the COVID situation and he actually donated a lot of Chick-fil-A food for these guys. And um, we appreciate that Colby. They really enjoyed it, yeah. including the tax and everyone, everyone got their hands in it. So um, we love Chick-fil-A. All right, we have a question coming in from Twitter that wants to know how military is Camden Military Academy? Justin, you're the current battalion commander, so why don't you tell us how military is CMA? Um, CMA is 
on a scale of one to ten, um, ten being like after boot camp, I think it's around uh, five. So you have your free time, which you can do pretty much whatever you want. Um, you can go outside, play, uh, shoot some hoops, go lift weights. Um, but then there's times during during the school day where you have you're wearing your uniform, you're going, you're marching in formations, and you keep your room clean. So I guess yeah, I would put it around a five. Yeah, that's usually what I tell people. You know, we're definitely not a country club, so you're going to do more than just wear uniforms. But um, but also we're not screaming and yelling to drop and give me 20 push-ups. So um, we're a pretty good mix um, of, of military and, you know, college prep boarding. Um, Jack, what say, do you think about the uniform? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, was, I would just piggyback on that and saying that one thing about Camden in terms of how military it really is, I think it borrows a lot of really great traits from military. So, for instance, a structured schedule, right? So I think a lot of uh, folks, especially between the ages of 13 and 18, have trouble coming up with their own schedules and, and being effective with their time. So having a really you know drawn out schedule for the day and knowing, okay, I have 30 minutes to do this, I have 45 minutes to do this, and really kind of keeping the cap on what you're doing in a day is, is infinitely helpful. And I think that's one of the, the biggest benefits of being in a military structure is it just gives you a lot more responsibility and accountability of here's how I'm gonna lay out my day and, and you can kind of work backwards opposed to just sort of free form, um, you know, of what your day is going to look like. Yeah, thanks for adding that. And um, Jack, I wanted to ask you about the uniforms because I get a lot of questions about uniforms and haircuts. So um, can you kind of tell them about the uniform, what uniform you wear when, and uh, maybe how short the hair has to be? So the hair from two on the sides and no more than two inches on the top, which a lot of people think it's bad in my opinion. It's just hair, it grows back. Um, the, the uniform that we wear, the class uniform, blue dress down pants, gray collared shirt, or dress shirt, I should say, um, with the shoulder boards and name tag. Some people say it's really comfortable. I don't have a problem with it. I think it's all right. Um, when it's raining, bad weather, we wear the ACUs or Army Combat uniform. I think they changed to OCPs this year, but... um. It's the like what you'd see almost in the movies, the camo, um, and then the parade uniform on special occasions like church or parades. That's um, that's the one you usually see on the pictures in the Instagram. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it. I have another question coming in for our alumni. So um, let's see. How did CMA help you get to where you are today? Wow. Okay. So I guess what's something you learned here at CMA to help you achieve your success to where you are? And Colby, we'll start with you. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for me, I'm the oldest of the old timer here. Uh, it's something that you're not going to really get, um, in my opinion, until, you know, maybe five, 10 years, maybe a little longer after you leave. But I know for me personally, um, it's thick in my skin. It, it, military school not so much to me, it wasn't so much the military. It was just the environment. I just spoke about it a little earlier with uh, with kids coming out. It's just hard. Um, it's tough, but it's hard on parents too. I remember my mom cried for three weeks in a row when she first brought me here. Um, but it thickened my skin because you're going to have trials in your life. It's going to be, um, you're going to, it's no way around it. It's, it's going to happen. But by going to Camden military, um, going to help you get through those trials a lot easier so for me personally um chick-fil-a um, the job i have now is a dream gig for me right so uh, it's, it's a difficult job to get um but to me uh it's, it's not about the job it's, it's camden set me up um from watching tack officers i know lieutenant colonel armstrong he was my commandant um he would always have be with his grandson i would see him all the time on the track getting ice cream Colonel Cook was my TAC officer. He always kissed his wife every time he left. So with Chick-fil-A, a lot of stuff in life is luck. I mean, right place, right time. Um, but it, it doesn't take luck to be a good father. It doesn't take luck to be a good husband. It doesn't take luck um, to, to keep your family in church or um, be a good citizen. And that's what Camden taught me. So it was more for me, looking back on it, about the long term, not the short term. Because uh, it's going to help you get through trials in your life, and it's going to teach you how to be a man, uh, to support your family, how to treat your kids, um, and, and and be a good husband. So that's what it did for me. Yeah, great. All right, Nick, how about you? 
Yeah, I mean, I'd say the biggest thing, hands down, is, is accountability. I think it really sets you up and gets you into a place where you start finding success to be fun, right? You start chasing, measuring goals and figuring out ways on how to achieve them. And Camden does a really good job of setting a structure to where if you excel, you are rewarded and you're recognized in front of your peers and that that feels really good and that there is something very almost spiritual about being around people who are going through the same struggle as you and being recognized as excelling in some form or fashion. So just really showing folks that it feels good to succeed. And once you start finding little things here and there where you, you know, uh, small accomplishments across the road, you think, oh, I, I think I could do more than that, or I want more than that, or I could do better. And you keep pushing yourself further and further. And that just translates into so many different ways in life. And that's something that's really carried me um, all the way through to where I am today is just understanding that you, you know, you can set these goals and hit them. And then you just want to hit new goals and keep pushing yourself further and further. And that's something that is fundamentally, you know, kind of burned into my brain being at CMA. All right. Thank you guys. I have a question coming in from YouTube that says there's still going to be a summer camp. And if so, how many weeks? Yes. So there will be a summer camp. Um, it's going to be three weeks. We're going to have summer school and camp. It runs July 12th through the July 31st, I believe, are the dates. Um, but you, CanyonMilitary.com is updated with the new dates and information. A um, couple of changes we've had to make to summer. Usually we have uh, weekend trips and things like that during the summer. Of course, we're not going to do that this year um, due to the COVID situation. But, um, but yes, we definitely will have summer school where you can take one course or for the younger guys, summer camp. All right, now back to our senior guys that were graduating. I want to ask you guys, what looking back now, um, what's one thing that Camden taught you um, that you think will be beneficial moving forward? And Justin, you go first. Uh, just like Nick said, uh, the structure, it, it has helped me a lot. I, to this day, I still use um, kind of structure in my schedule. Uh, whenever we had online learning, I had specific times that I would get on my computer and get my homework done. And also the discipline it helped me a lot. I, I kind of, let me see how I can word this. I, um, I know what I'm supposed to be doing in my life, so I'm just going to keep on doing that. And I'm not, I'm going to try and not deviate for, and go on to another path. Okay. And Jack, how about you? Um, I'd say the same thing, the structure, but also the work ethic. It, really teaches you there's no shortcuts in life and you've got to do things the right way to get it done. There you go. Good answer. Um, yeah. And that's right. There are no shortcuts. And and here, you know, the, the one thing I like to see these young men, you know, I, I'm the admissions director, so I do the initial interviews. And so I really get to see the changes with these guys. And, um, you know, I'm missing it this year, but typically the Saturday night before graduation, we have a dance and we have a um, Saber Arch and all the seniors walk through with their families and you get to, you know, I'm kind of the guy at the door, the last face. I was the first face you saw and probably the last one you're going to see um, at least that Saturday night. And, um, you know, it's kind of cool just to kind of see all the changes that, that, you know, how they've grown, not just academically, but, you know, and not just athletically, but as a man, you know, just to, to carry themselves in a different, I've had guys come in before with a hoodie, with their shoulder slump, they wouldn't make eye contact with me during an interview. And then that Saturday night before graduation, they have a uniform with tons of ribbons. Their chest is, there is you're poking their chest out, you know, carrying themselves like a real man walking down the sword. So um, I will miss that this year, but, um, but I'd like to see those changes. All right, um, I wanna talk about the daily life here at CMA and um, kind of what happens on a typical day. So Jack, can you kind of take us through wake up to, to say lunchtime and then Justin will let you do lunch to dinner. So um, from, Depending on what position you're in, uh, usually we'll have to start off with this. Usually you'll wake up around six o'clock. You'll get your room squared away. Everything's clean. You'll clean your barracks from hallways to police call, cleaning up outside, making sure everything looks nice. And then seven o'clock, you'll be heading over to breakfast. You have a breakfast formation at 715. Everybody's standing outside. You'll march in, eat breakfast. Usually there's a time where you'll either drill or work out, or I guess you could call it PT, but that's what it was, um, or tack time, which is your tack will choose what you do. And then that's usually from after breakfast to about nine o'clock, 9.25 classes start. 
on Mondays, Tuesdays, and for Mondays you have tutorial after first period. Tuesday tutorial is after second period. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday tutorial is after third period, which is right before lunch. After that tutorial on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, you go to lunch. And Justin, you can take it from there. And then um, after lunch, we have our last three classes. Um, and then after our classes end at 3.15. And then we have kind of a hallway formation, depending on what company you are in. And then you get on free time. And free time lasts until, if I'm correct, 6.15, because that's when uh, I step off to call formation for dinner. After dinner, we have a uh, study hall, which is from 7.15 to 9 o'clock, if I'm correct. And then after study hall, we go. To, we have 30 minutes to an hour to, um, to brush our teeth, get take extra showers. And then lights out is at 10 o'clock. Yep. There you go. So that's your typical day here at CMA. On the weekends, we do have Saturday classes occasionally. Um, it allows us, if we go Saturday from 8.30 to 12.30, um, it allows us to have longer breaks. So at Christmas, we get two and a half to three weeks and, you know, we have a full week for Thanksgiving and things like that. So um, that's kind of the weekend, but that's usually about once a month. Um, if that often this year, we didn't have quite as many Saturday classes as we've had in the past. All right. I have a question for the alumni too. Um, they want to know, do you guys stay connected um, to other alum once you left Camden? So, you know, we've heard about brotherhood and, you know, there's a tight brotherhood in the military. And does that really exist in military school as well? Um, Nick, we'll start with you. Oh yeah, for sure. I uh, just based on what you talked about and me recently getting engaged, um, I, I'm, we're putting together our wedding list and who we're going to invite. And I think seven or eight people that are on the wedding list uh, are CMA guys. So we, I still talk to them quite a bit. Um, actually, saw one a couple weeks ago. I mean, some of these guys, there. I mean, you're just brothers for life, right? I mean. It's, you get similar to what Colby said, it's pretty difficult when you get dropped into a situation, you know, 13, 14, 15, no parents, no friends, right? And you're all going through it together. So when you meet some of these people and, and you're kind of grinding through this experience together, I mean, it's, it's a kind of bond that I just can't even explain. I mean, some of these guys feel like family um, and still talk to them quite a bit. And they'll definitely, you know, be at my wedding. And, and you know, I, I couldn't think of a world where they weren't around. All right. Awesome. How about you, Colby? Hey, yeah. So Nick uh, nailed it. I think uh, it, it creates a bond that you'll always have. Um, I still keep up to this day with four or five guys, not a ton uh, like I used to, because you guys will all understand once you get married and have kids, uh, you don't have as much time for friends anymore. You got time for family and, and your job, but no doubt it creates a bond. Nick said it. You're, you're living with these guys. You're there. 24-7 um, all day long. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it is a brotherhood. But it's one of those things that where you don't, you might not get it again until five, ten years down the road after you've graduated, just how close you really were and how fun it really was. Um, I mean, let's face it. When you're 15, you're thinking no girls, um, no family, no friends. Like, eh, I don't know about this. But looking back on it, um, you're going to realize how close you became to to these guys and how much fun you had and and you can depend on them and they will be there nick he said it best they're like family they really are all right and um i kind of want to piggyback on that um justin you actually you know participate in our distance learning due to the the covid part and so you didn't get the opportunity to like say goodbye like we typically would here at cma at the end of a school year um do you have anybody in particular you want to give a shout out to or Talk about maybe uh, yeah. the guys that you missed. Uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to our admissions director, Casey Robinson. Uh, he's kind of he's been there since I was in seventh grade. Brought me up doing tours, stuff like this, all the time. Um, shout out to Colonel Bowen. He's helped me a lot, um, especially with tips and tricks on how to be successful in life. Um, Sergeant Major Wilder. He, he helped me a lot, even when I was in seventh grade, being all bad and everything. He uh, he kind of brought me up to where I am today. Um, let's see, Colonel Hefflin, he's helped me a lot with all my academic stuff. He helped me make my decision on going to WVU. Um, I'd also like to thank all my, uh, all my teachers and all my faculty members for making CMA the place it is today. So. All right, thank you. 
And Jack, um, I know maybe some of the guys left before you got a chance to say goodbye or, you know, whatnot. So you have anybody you want to give a shout out to during this time? Um, I would like, I want to give a shout out to Colonel Heflin, you know, just always being there for me, helping me out with academics, just kind of being a guy to talk to. Um, I also want to give a shout out to First Sergeant Collins. I didn't really get to say goodbye to him as, as much as I would, I would have liked to, but um, he was an amazing guy. I mean, there's just so much I could go on about him. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Captain Davis, as well as all the rest of my teachers. I mean, y'all were awesome this year. Um, that's it, really. All right. And guys, just so you know, we're putting together a little video from the teachers that we're going to post later um, tomorrow after graduation. So make sure you keep an eye on that because they are telling you goodbye because, um, you know, we missed out on that, too. We, you know, especially people like Justin have been here since he was I mean, Justin was like five feet tall when he started. So, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, OK, now I have a question coming in from Twitter that says, in what ways does Camden support you with learning? Um, so we have a lot of things in place. I mean, we have tutorials that are mandatory if your grades fall below a C. We have something called the Learning Center that becomes mandatory if you're making two Ds or an F. Um, but the small classes and things like that pay huge dividends. When you have, you know, 12 to 15 guys in a class, you have to maintain eye contact with the teacher. You can't hide behind someone else or fall asleep in the back or whatever. So, um, you know, like I said kind of earlier in the broadcast, it, when you start doing what you're supposed to be doing, um, school becomes a whole lot easier. And um, I think most of these guys will concur. And that kind of segues, segues me into talking about teachers. Um, you know, Justin, kind of tell me about teachers at Camden and maybe compare them to the teachers prior to Camden. Is there a difference or are we the same? Uh, I honestly think there's a 100% difference because uh, I used to be horrible in class and my teachers really would just push me off to the sides and they wouldn't really help me if, even if I needed help. But here at Camden, I can go in early in the morning around 8 o'clock when class starts at 930 and get help with my homework if I don't understand something where I could 100% not do that in public school. And then you have um, all your mentors, like your tech officers that can also help you that are somewhat like teachers and teach you how to be successful in life. Um, and also your teachers, they feel, I feel like they have a, like a level of care that the teachers at public school don't really have because they're more connected with the student. Cause there's definitely, there's like, I think in one of my, uh, my college classes, there was maybe 15 people and it just gives a teacher a whole better connection to students. Yeah, all of our teachers here have to either coach a sport or sponsor a club. So it's not your typical nine to three teachers, you know, where they just come in and then go home at the end of the day. These guys stick around all day. Um, you know, so a lot of our teachers have to participate in the study hall at night. So they come here. Our class day starts at 930 in the morning, but then they have study hall that lasts until nine or 930 at night. Um, so, you know, it's a pretty long day and they want to, you know, coach or, or have meetings or something to fill that that time up to. Um, I want to talk to my two alums about maybe some favorite teachers or favorite memories, somebody who really impacted you guys when you were here. Um, Colby, we'll let you go first. Yeah, so hands down, Colonel Thorpe. Um, and I knew that is, that is a special man. I think Casey told me yesterday he retired, and unfortunately I haven't, I haven't kept up with him too, too much, but he used to take me out to eat once a week, and he'd take me to Walmart once a week. And in my day, guys, like, there was no cell phones, I mean, so no technology, so that was a big deal. I mean, it was huge for me but it, to be able to go and do that. And he would never, ever, ever let me pay. And I don't even know, if, I mean, this is how good I had it with Colonel Ford. My senior year, he gave me a key to his apartment. I could go watch the Braves at night uh, after study hall. Um, he was just, it was like I was his, his own. Um, so that, that was huge for me. But to Casey's point, the, the teachers were phenomenal. It's it's not a normal teaching job. He's right. They're there all the time, but they build the same bond that cadets have with cadets. It's the same with teacher and cadets. There's a bond there. You see them all the time. Um, and it's, it's really, really special. Yeah. All right, Nick, how about you? Yeah. I mean, I think it's funny to hear the, the grads this year talking about Lieutenant Colonel Heflin, because even hearing the things they say about him is exactly echoed what I would say about Lieutenant Colonel Heflin. I mean, he was always there. Um, great advocate, not only as a student, but as a mentor. Right. And I think that the teachers at CMA are much more invested in 
the growth and development of students as men more so than just as students. I think when I was in public school, it's much more about get your studies done and get out, right? Anything that I teach you in quotes, you know, can be undone when you go home and whatever your situation is at home and parents and things like that. But when you're at CMA, right? you are home, right? So these teachers have a huge incentive to to contribute to your growth and development as a man. So, I mean, even things that were like Lieutenant Colonel Heflin, for instance, even things that were, that seemed to be focused on academics were much more focused on, is this how you carry yourself as a man? And one thing I'll never forget is one of my first weeks at CMA, I had pretty much blown off a quiz and I had put maybe two of 10 answers down And Lieutenant Colonel Heflin came over and said, do you have pride when you put your name on a piece of paper? Um, He's like, you know, you should have pride putting your name down. And I'll never forget that to this day. And I I think that's just a testament to the difference between teachers in public schools or in in schools that aren't CMA is they're so much more invested in the actual development as a man more so than just as a student. So. All right. I have an interesting question coming in that, um, I'm going to stick in with the alums for a second, and then we're also going to ask a similar question to the current students. But um, have you ever had to explain to someone why you went to a military boarding school? I'm thinking that question probably comes out of a, you know, the negative stereotype or stigma associated with military schools being for the bad kids and you know all that. So, have you ever had to kind of explain came to military and how did that conversation go? Nick, we'll go. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. I think especially and and I carry a badge of CMA with with credit, quite a high degree of pride. So whenever folks ask me, you know, what did you do? I I start with my story at CMA and then talk about university and into my professional career. But um, you always get the raised eyebrow. And how come you ended up at military school? Right. And I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, although it was a decision that was a joint decision with my family, it, it was just a matter of knowing myself in that I thrive under sort of a structured environment and having clear, concise goals that are laid out in front of me. And you get the opportunity at Camden to excel much further than maybe even in a public school. So as you talk about ranks, you know, where you go from a private all the way up to to Lieutenant Colonel Battalion Commander, all of those interim steps that kind of happen in between um, really give you a sense of, of accomplishment. And so when folks say, oh, were you, you sent to military school, my response is always, well, you know, I, I had some troubles academically and I went, right? And then after about six weeks, you immediately know that that this is for me and that that it feels good being here. So all right. Colby, same question. Yeah. So uh Nick again uh hit it on the head. I think there's a stereotype there that if you go to military school, it's because you're a bad kid and you had some trouble. That's just not the case, not from when I was there. There are a lot of kids there that are going there for different reasons, but none of them are because they were a bad kid. Now, there might be some that they do need some structure and they need some help to get their wheels going again. But yeah, you get those you get those questions, so just be honest with them, you know? Uh, I had some academic issues, got me straight for life. But look, when you, I kind of go back to the previous question. Um, Nick talked about it a lot, but and I don't want to keep beating the the same horse here, but um, it really is about setting you up for life after Camden. The military stuff while you're here is great, and it's something you should be proud of, something you earn. But when you leave Camden, the uniform comes off. It's time for life, and life is hard. And these TAC officers and these teachers and the administration, they're getting you ready uh, for life. Because the bottom line is, you got to learn how to talk to somebody eye to eye. You got to learn how to have a connection with somebody. Um, if you graduate from Harvard or Yale, but if you don't know how to interact with somebody and have a conversation and connect and look them in the eye, that's going to be a struggle for you in a job interview. And Camden's going to have you ready for all those type things. So um, it's more about long term. I know I said it earlier, but it, it really is. It's going to set you up for, for life and, and to how to be how to be a man. Good. Good job. All right. Justin, what do you say to somebody who says military school? What did you do? Um, How do you respond to those kind of questions? Uh, Honestly, I kind of just kind of not really brush it off, but I just explained that military school isn't always for bad kids. Uh, There's kids just that want to get better themselves and they need a tool like CMA to help them do that. And that's pretty much how I explain it. 
And you, Jack, I mean, you're, you're from Texas. So, I mean, people say, oh my gosh, you went to boarding school in South Carolina. You must have done something horrible. How do you respond? <laughs> Uh, whenever people ask me, I'd say it was a joint decision to better myself as a person and academically. Good. That is, and that's exactly right. Um, you know, I'm no, I'm no fool. Um, most young men do not wake up in the morning and say, I want to go to military school. Um, you know, this is something that it's usually someone else's idea and introduced to them. And, and um, you know, then it, they come and see the campus and realize that we're not what they see on the movies and what they see in the media and that we are actually a normal school. Um, yes, we wear uniforms and yes, we're going to have a lot more structure here than you probably will at home or in a private day school, but um, that we're not, we don't lay awake at night and plan ways to make you miserable. Um, you know, we try to lay awake at night and plan ways to build you up um, and, you know, to, to help you reach that full potential that you have in yourself. So, um, all right, let's see. I want to kind of know the point for, well, actually for all of you guys, I guess, this is kind of a good question. Um, we'll start with Colby though. At what point when you were here at CMA, did it actually click for you when you realized, oh, this is maybe what's best for me right now? Yeah, so pretty, pretty early on. Uh, I've always told people that you adjust to everything in life. You always will. Um, the good things and the bad things, you really don't have a choice. Uh, so once you get in that routine and you get it going, um, you'll quickly realize this is where you're meant to be and you start thriving. Let me tell you something. When you, when you go from a private, the, my greatest moment, and I, I was never a battalion commander, um, but my greatest moment feeling was going from a PFC to a corporal. And you know what? I wasn't even a PFC. I skipped that. I went from a private to a corporal. And that was just, I was so proud of myself. Uh, it was just a cool moment and a cool feeling um, to do that. And to, you know, I'll tell you this for, for the guys out there, you'll hear this sometimes, I'm sure. Like, how can my parents send me there? Um, do you not care about me? Let me tell you, Casey said it earlier. They, if they didn't care about you, they wouldn't be spending $27,000 to send you somewhere. I mean, that, that doesn't, I mean, if they're spending that kind of money, that's, they care about you a whole, whole, whole lot. So, uh, but it doesn't take long, uh, back to your question, it doesn't take long to, to figure out this is where I need to be, and, uh, and I'm glad I'm here. Yeah, I joke with people all the time and say, hey, if your parents didn't love you, there's people that would take you out of this world for a lot less than 27,000. So, <laughs> you know, this is an opportunity, not, not something yeah. to be viewed poorly. All right, Nick, what do you think? What's your, when did it click for you? Yeah, so I think it was between like six to eight weeks. So there's a break that's scheduled right after the school year starts. There's a break scheduled, I think about six to eight weeks after. Um, and once you get comfortable and start getting into the routine, and I think it was a lot of resistance at first, and then you kind of just settle in and you realize, you know, you've got friends, you start figuring out, I really like going to the Carlisle house and getting this kind of ice cream every day, or, you know, I like my football team. So once you start settling into the routine, you don't really notice that you were resistant to it at first. And I think that kind of started to hit right around the six week mark. And the reason I know that is because when break was coming up and I was supposed to go home, my immediate first thought was, what? Well, I kind of don't want to go home right now. I'm, I'm pretty good. I got my friends here. I, I got all my favorite things I like to do. And I've got my football team and, you know, I like my teachers. And, and then I thought to myself, I was like, whoa, did I really just say that I don't want to go home? I'd rather stay here and hang out with my friends. So yeah, I'd say within the first, you know, six to eight weeks, you really start looking back and thinking, wow, that time really flew. And, you know, I like being here. So. Yeah. And I hear that a lot, you know, kids will go home at spring break or Christmas break, especially the longer break. And they're like itching to get back. And they are like, wow, you know, what happened? Cause I didn't want to go to this place, you know, in August. So I've heard that before. And Jack, let's hear it from you. Um, at what point did it really click for you here at CMA? I think it was, uh, about the, it was similar to Colby. It was as soon as I got the, the first little, uh, the rank on my shoulder, it was like, dang, this, I don't feel like I've done a lot, but clearly I've done something to earn this. And it felt really, really good. I felt like a, I felt like I had accomplished something huge to some people. It wouldn't feel very big, but to me, that was a very big point. And that was definitely a turning point at CMA. Yeah. And, and I like to hear that. I mean, that's kind of what I talked about earlier. Success breeds success. You know, I, I talk with a lot of young men who, when they first arrive, they, their grades aren't that good, or, you know, they're giving mom and dad a little slack at home, but they feel very frustrated with themselves. They feel like they're beating themselves. You know, they're, they feel like they're giving 150%, but mom and dad knows that they're only giving about 25% and they want to get it all out of you. And so, 
you know, coming here and, you know, like you mentioned, getting the promotions, um, making the dean's list or the honors list, having those small successes um, are huge. And that's why we we like to talk about that success breeds success. And something else is goal setting. Um, you know, a lot of these guys do not have any goals when they arrive. Um, I don't know about these guys. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but, you know, they just really didn't have their future planned out. Um, you know, I think one of the guys said it earlier, if you're 15, you're just kind of thinking about when's the next party on Friday night or, you know, who the hottest girl is at the time. But, you know, there's a lot more to it. You've got to be long-term thinking. And we try to do that by establishing short-term goals and then, you know, getting you to those uh, accomplishments of the long-term goals. Um, all right, we're going to kind of start wrapping it up. Um, but, you know, any last questions, you can use hashtag CMA open house. But I do want to um, go to our old timers for a second. I want to, is there any advice that you would give these guys or any message that you would like to give these guys who are graduating tomorrow at 10 o'clock um, that maybe when you were graduating, you didn't really appreciate? Um, and Nick, we'll start with you. Yeah, so I can tell you, you mentioned Colonel Bolin, and I can tell you that the week before my graduation, my best friend and I, we were sitting on the steps at the admin house, and I said, man, I can't wait to graduate, I can't wait to go to college, and Colonel Bolin walked out and said, you're going to miss this place one day, I promise you. you, you've got all your brothers here, you know, this is your family now, I promise you, you're going to miss this place one day. I said, yeah, that may be true, but I'm going to go run off to college and have a good time, but I think really just kind of take in what experience you had and, and really appreciate those relationships you made because it is very rare that you come across people with that strong of bonds and relationships. I think it's it's really one of a kind. All right, all right, Colby. Yeah, so mad respect to you two guys. Um, I mean, that's a great accomplishment for, for graduating at Camden, um, for sure. Um, Nick, once again, Colonel Boland saying that, he's right. It's something you don't get until maybe a few years down the road that how much uh, Camden meant to you and how much fun you had there. So advice I'd give you is the older you get, the, the faster time goes by. So if you got grandparents that are living, you know, don't, wherever you go next, college, military, whatever, um, slow down, remember your grandparents, because there's going to be a day that probably not in the too distant future, I mean, nobody really has grandparents when when you're 45 and 50 that they're not going to be there anymore so slow down try to slow down your life um and really you know talk, take time to talk to the people that uh that you care about and one last thing i would say to, to parents is um you might have to make this decision yourself for your child um you can't get caught up in the my my son doesn't want to go so i'm not going to do it i look there's no 15 or 16 year old in my opinion that knows what's best for their life. There's just not, they're only 15 or 16 or whatever the age, they're a kid. You know what's best for your child. Um, don't, don't put off uh, uh, going to Camden military uh, for the short term. And when you'll, you'll have, you might have regrets when they're 22 and 23 and they're not where you'd like them to be, you're gonna have a lot of regrets and it's gonna be too late. So it's tough, it's hard, but you know, the right decisions are not always the easy ones. Yeah. All right. And Justin, when I ask you kind of, you've been here a long time now, um, you know, you were here for the whole gamut and um, actually got to skip a grade though, right? I remember correctly. Yes, sir. Yeah. So yeah, I must have a little brain up there. All right. But, um, you know, tell us kind of, what are you going to miss? What's something, you know, that you've kind of been reflecting on or something that's going to, you're really going to miss next year in college? Uh, I'm going to miss all my brothers, honestly. That's one of the major things I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss seeing Blaine every, like, every day, uh, seeing my friends Green, Walter, uh, walking into class and just having nothing but smiles from um, all, all my brothers. I'm going to miss having, having pretty much a connection with people that I, I live with. Um, and one thing that I want to thank CMA for is because going, I'm going off to college and most everybody is kind of scared about it. I'm, I'm ready for it. Cause I I've been there. I've been, I've done that. I've been dropped off in an area where I I know no one and I've lived away from my parents for mm -hmm. four and a half years now. And it's kind of nothing major to me. And one other thing I'm going to miss is, uh, definitely just the people and the discipline, but yeah. All right. And Jack, you, how about you? Uh, that, just like he said, definitely the brotherhood. Um, Doing this distance learning, it's, I mean, it sucked, to be honest, but um, 
by by far I've been thinking about it. Like there will be room, there will be times. I mean, you can't do anything. You're stuck in your home, so you're like, dang. If I was there, I could probably be hanging out with so and so, or I could be throwing football with Wilson, or just doing things you know you'd want to be doing. All right, good good job. Now my final question. I'm going to give all four of you an opportunity to answer this question is, you know, your parents, this was a sacrifice probably for everyone's parents, um, you know, monetarily, emotionally, mentally, um, speak to them. And, you know, tell me, do you thank them? If you had to do it all over again, would you? And we'll start with Colby. Uh, yes, no brainer. Um, I thank them many times uh, for sending me to Camden, not when I was in Camden, but uh, afterwards, for sure. Um, it's 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 a hard it's a, it's a big ask money wise it's a big ask emotional wise but uh listen i think anybody any parent would pay anything they could to know that their son um is going to make it in life because it's it's all about life it's all about it's how are you treating your your spouse or your good dad are uh, you a good uh, citizen in your in your community uh so 100 percent um to my parents, 100%. That the best decision I ever, ever they ever made for me, and it's turned out well for me. I've, I'm proud of where I'm at now uh, with Chick Fil A, but I'm more proud um, that I'm a good husband and I'm a good father. My kids know I love them. My wife knows that I love her, and I got that from Camden, from just watching TAC officers and Lieutenant Colonel Armstrong, uh, how they were with their with their children and with their um, uh, spouses. So yeah, it's been great. All right. And how about you, Nick? Yeah, 100%. I tell people this all the time, you know, when the question comes up, why did you get this sent to military school? I tell them I'd go back tomorrow, right? Given the opportunity to hop in a time machine and go run back to Camden, I would do it in an absolute heartbeat. Um, you know, I really thank my parents for it. Uh, my dad, since he was more military, I think he knew, you know, what was best for me and, and he was ready to sort of pull the trigger on that. My mom was very resistant. Uh, she had told me, you know, I don't want to feel like someone else is raising my son. I don't want to feel like I didn't do it correctly. Right. And, and me going really took a, a big toll on her. And, and she felt like, you know, she had somehow, you know, failed me or, or failed our family and, and that I was going off somewhere else. But um, you know, now her and I talk about it and it was hands down the best decision that she could have ever made for me. And I think she looks back on that time now very diff differently where, you know, different people need different types of education and different types of structure. And, and that's no in indication on, you know, the parent's ability to manage or, or raise a kid. It's just some people need different environments to thrive. And, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that my mom kind of uh, took that emotional hit and, and kind of went against her guns to, to send me to CMA because it ultimately turned out so much, so much better for me, so. All right, thank you. And Jack, what would you like to say to your parents? Um, I definitely think, well, I definitely wanna thank my dad. He definitely pushed it on my mom the hardest. And at the time she really didn't want to, but in the long run, I think it was very beneficial for all of us really, it bettered me as a person and bettered me as a as a son to them. Um, I've definitely done a lot of things that he's wanted me to he's wanted to see me do that without Camden, I probably never would have gotten to do or never been able to do just because of a poor mindset or just being too lazy to do it. Um, it definitely helped me as a person. All right. And last but not least, Justin Wilson, what would you like to say? Uh, I would first off, I would like to say thank you, because uh, I've I've watched them make sacrifices just to, to allow me to go to Camden. Um, I would like to thank my mom because she's the one that kind of brought me brought this up, and because I know that I would definitely not be where I I am right now if I didn't come to see me. Because I'm not gonna lie, I, I was not really a bad kid. I just made bad decisions, um, and also I would like to just say thank you to my dad because he kind of uh, made the ability for me to come to see me possible. Um, what else? I, I just want to thank my dad again. Cause he, he told me that if I went to see me, I would open a whole lot of doors and that is definitely true now. And I would not have the opportunity to be going to the college that I am today. If I kept on the path that I was on. All right. 
Well, guys, I want to thank you for joining me today. And, you know, we've we've got four great success stories with you guys. And um, we at CMA are all very proud of all of you. And um, keep it going. And for our graduates tomorrow, congratulations. Um, we've got to get off here because we have our award ceremony starting at 2 o'clock virtually. But I um, want to thank all the viewers out there for, for watching. And if you have any additional questions that we didn't get to or you want to have a question maybe for one of these guys, please email me at admissions at camdenmilitary.com. Um, we are also holding other virtual events. We'll have more YouTube lives throughout the summer, as well as some Zoom sessions that are more intimate one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So anyway, thanks again and goodbye from Camden Military Academy.